Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another night of Strange and Scary Games. Tonight we've got, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, Paranorma Sites, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Uh, in the last video, we played through Shogo Okie's prologue. Uh, in this video, I was thinking that we would start out with Tetsuo Satsumi. Uh, it looks like he starts like around the same time as Shogo did, uh, which is why I want to do him before Harway. Um, and then we can do uh, Tetsuo, Yako, and then Harway. Tetsuo Satsumi, Chief Inspector of the Metropolitan Police Department. Could you guys see what I was doing before? Let me redo this. So yeah, Tetsuo and then Yako. Tetsuo Satsumi, Chief Inspector of the Metropolitan Police Department. First Investigative Division is investigating the ex uh, mysterious death of a fellow officer. He visits the scene of the incident, the former Yasuda Gardens, with his subordinate Jun Erio. Tetsuo Satsumi, 11 p.m. Former Yasuda Gardens. Hey boss, forensics is all done. The crime scene is clean. The other officers have all gone home. It's just us now. The park should be able to open up back, uh, open back up tomorrow like nothing ever happened. I doubt it'll get many visitors after everything that happened. You'd be surprised. Lots of people love that kind of thing. I bet they'll be lining up to get in. Cold stuff is really popular right now. Did you not know that, boss? Sounds stupid. Well, it's not exactly rooted in science, but... If ghosts really did exist, we could just ask them who the perp was. Somehow, I doubt it would be that simple. Oh, but you know, I've heard that high school girls are really into the spirit board thing these days. Supposedly, you can call on spirits and talk to them by using a board with letters on it. Wouldn't that be something? You can try it out yourself if you're so interested. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's give it a go sometime, boss. What now? Stop messing around. You really think we're going to solve the case by moving a coin across a scrap of paper? Sounds like you know all about it. We've got to be open-minded. What if that's how police work is going to be from now on? Don't make me laugh. Spirit board. Due to the occult craze, divination has become popular among young boys and girls. All one needs is a coin and a piece of paper with letters and numbers written on it. Using these, all one has to do is ask a question of the call, uh, called upon spirit and will move the coin and answer. It is believed to be a tool that was adopted from Western spiritualism and molded by Japanese occult enthusiasts. Though it is considered a form of divination, the re ritualistic nature of its usage can cause self-hypnosis or auto-suggestion, leading to hallucinations or symptoms of similar uh, to spirit possession. Many schools banned these spirit boards after there were several cases of students sneaking into schools at night, in addition to stories of people having seizures when using the boards. I get the feeling that that is uh, foreshadowing for uh, Yako. Listen up, Ario. You can't go blaming the death of your buddy on something like the occult. I don't care if it was ghosts or the occult or what. Whoever or whatever it was that did this. I'll get them. I promise you that. Well, you've got the right attitude, but we don't even know if this is a murder yet. Bi biases weaken our, your, our biases weaken our judgment. Get too fixated on one thing, and you stop seeing everything else. Aye, aye, boss. So now that we finished investigating the scene, let's review what we know. Hmm. Now it's getting late. I figured we'd head straight home from here. Come on, we've got to go over all the info we've gathered. And what better place to do that than here at the scene of the crime, where we can soak up the atmosphere? Soak up the atmosphere? The hell is there to soak up? You must be really into this occult stuff if you get off and being in a place like this. Wait, you mean being somewhere like this doesn't get your blood pumping? No way. No, no, don't turn this around on me. I'm not the weird one here. Cripes. Ah, oh, fine. Let's, uh, ah, oh, fine. Let's get this over with. Aye, aye, boss. Junerio, a detective in the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department, First Investigative Division. His rank is sergeant. This is his first time leading a case. It's like he's graduated from rookie to newbie. He looks put together on the outside, but acts like a kid most of the time. Honestly, the force could use more people like him. So, early in the morning yesterday, a staff member found the victim collapsed here in the park and called the police when they realized he was dead. 
While there were no obvious external wounds, the fact that he was a police officer and the evidence of a struggle means it's likely that he was uh, that this was a murder. The Sumida office sent it over to us since it involved the death of an officer, and we were tasked with the investigation. What we need to do is figure out what happened and whether there was foul play involved. I think that about sums things up. But, uh, boss. Yeah? Is this case really important enough to assign someone from the investiga investigation division? I mean, a friend of mine died, so it's important to me, but... It's all up to the higher-ups. I'm sure they've got their reasons. Boss, you know something, don't you? It'll all become clear in time. Try not to worry about it too much. Thinking about it. The only thing we know for sure is the identity of the victim. That means there must have been something special about him, right? Maybe. Maybe he knew something he wasn't supposed to. Some kind of secret or something. Isn't that right? You're pretty sharp sometimes, you know that? If you've picked up on that, you should be able to put the rest of you to get together yourself. Hmm. The former Yasuda Gardens here in Yoko Ami Ichome were orig originally built as part of the Daimyo's estate back in the Edo period. The park became city property a number of years ago and underwent extensive renovations. There's not a soul around at this time of night. Quite doesn't even begin to describe it. This is where the victim was found. It's, well, it's clean now. It almost feels like nothing happened here at all. But once an incident like this has come to pass, there's no going back. Not that knowing that is any consolation. This pond, they say it used to flow into the Sumida River, but the river became so polluted that they cut it off. Well, it is our duty to get to the bottom of a suspicious death, especially when involving an officer. The victim is Hajime Yoshimi of the Juvenile Division of the Sumida City Community Safety Bureau. 27 years old, single. He mostly dealt with cases involving juveniles and education. His rank was senior police officer. You knew him well, didn't you? What was he like? Yes, we were in the academy together. We still went out for drinks together every month or two. He could be a little rowdy, but he was like a big brother to us all. He was kind and cared about his friends. For better or worse, he wasn't the uptight type of cop. The man always showed empathy, and I heard he was popular with the locals for it. He treated each and every troubled kid he met with compassion. He had a great track record when it came to rehabilitation. Sounds like we lost a good one. Yes, we did. We truly did. I knew being a cop was dangerous, but something like I, I knew something like this could happen, but it's never easy when it happens for real. I know the feeling. He didn't seem to care much about climbing the ranks, but he was at the top of our class. Our only problem was that he took on so much, he had the most unfinished paperwork, too. I always felt we'd need an unusual guy like him to help us solve all our unusual cases. Hajime Yoshimi. Hajime was a police officer with the Sumida City Community Safety Bureau and was primarily responsible for juvenile and education cases. He held the rank of head patrol officer and entered the force at the same time as Jun Ariel. Hajime was, a was found dead under mysterious circumstances at the former Yasuda Gardens early in the morning uh, yesterday. Once a rebellious gang member himself, Yoshimi turned his life around and used his own experiences to connect with troubled youth as a police officer. While his appearance and demeanor suggested a man who was rough around the edges, he was a passionate, loyal, and caring man at heart, looked up to as big brother by his peers. Yoshimi achieved stellar results in his work with juvenile cases, but his consistently sloppy paperwork and less informal attitude essentially doomed his career and had him writing formal apologies on the regular. He left behind a fiancé whom he had been dating since high school. Don't worry, you're plenty unusual yourself. Me? I was the most normal of my classmates. Besides, the real weirdo among us quit the academy a long time ago. There was one even weirder than you. Hajime was quite the bad boy in school, apparently. He ended up with the police a lot. He said the officer in charge was good to him, helped him get back on track. The reason he wanted to become a cop was to pay his kindness forward. Said it was the first time he ever took his study seriously. That's a good story. Love that kind of thing. Makes me want to have a drink in his honor. Please don't make fun of my dead friend. Hey, I said in his honor. You should aspire to become the kind of cop people miss when they die in the field. Say that like it's a sure thing I'll die. 
Besides, if I end up biting it, I'm sure you'll be the one who misses me most, boss. Eh? Come on, don't be like that. It'll hurt morale. Well, I guess how much I'll miss you depends on how this investigation goes. I can already see it. Ario, no! Why do you have to go and get yourself killed? I have no idea what's going on in that head of yours. Yeah, that'll be a sight to see. I can't wait. Can't wait for your own death? Get us together, kid. Sheesh. You really are something. Thank you. What about the victim's family? The Yoshimi family is from uh, Kita Sinju in Adachi City, but Hajime's parents died a long time ago. He lived there all alone, no siblings or anything. I went to his house a few times for drinks. I was surprised. It's this huge, old-looking place. Like, you know, the kind of place that seems super haunted. And he lived there alone? It looked like the home of an old noble family. It was hard to imagine him being such a delinquent living in a house like that. There's that bias I was talking about. If he's from an old family, I'm sure things were complicated. That's a bias too, boss. He never talked about any of that, even when we were drunk, so I don't know much about it. Hmm. Oh, one more thing. Yeah? Hajime was engaged. He'd been seeing his fiance ever since they were in, high in school. Over 10 years, they just started talking about getting married. What was her name again? He showed me a picture once. She was a beautiful woman. That's so. How terrible for her. But she may know if there had been anything going on with him lately. We should speak to her. Yeah, his fiance may have been his only confidant. I'm sure someone at the Sumida Police Department has already contacted her. I'll look into it tomorrow. Ah, hey boss. I looked into the case that Hajime was running. Oh great, that's the kind of stuff I want to know. How was Hajime working on the day he died? Uh, what was Hajime working on the day he died? Well, according to the report from the day before, he had two cases involving juveniles. Uh-huh. The first was the suicide of a high school girl who jumped off a building in Kamazawa last week. Ah, yeah, I did hear about that. The girl's name was Michi Michio Shira Shira Ash Shira Ishii. Michio Shira Ishii. She was a second year student at Kamogata, Kamagata High School. But it seems as though Hajime had contact with her even before this incident. Hmm, so she'd been troubled for some time. That's the thing. About a month ago, he happened to see her walking around town. She looked upset, so he stuck, struck up a conversation with her. He was sure there was something bothering her, but she wouldn't tell him what. Must have been troubled at home. That's what he thought, too. It seems he visited her home and spoke to her parents, but... They said there was no problem, so there was nothing else he could do. And now she's dead. Hmm. Then it's possible he could have prevented her suicide, then. He must have been devastated. And that's why he was looking into this Michio Shura Ishii again. He must have thought that something terrible had happened that drove her to end her life. But ultimately, he never reported the findings of his investigation. I see, and you're thinking that it may have something uh, that it may have had something to do with his death. We'll have to find out what is what it is Hajime discovered. Right. Let's check with the Sumida Police Department about that tomorrow too. And what was the other case he was working? This one I also related is also related to Kamagata High School. A troublemaker named Hitomi Okuda, she seems to be the leader of a group of kids who is up to new good. Hmm. <laughs> Juvenile delinquency. Fun. She was pretty bad for a while. Multiple charges of destruction of property, assault, and battery. You name it. Hajime had been working with her for about six months, and she was finally starting to open up. Then he met with the girl the day he died. Well, every school's got its problems. But I'm sure he'd be worried about how she'd get on without him. Right. Just when he, she'd finally found an adult she could trust. She might act out without someone to help her get through this. We'll have to make sure the Sumida Community Safety Bureau does their job, but... Hmm. We can't rule out the possibility that meeting this delinquent girl had something to do with his death. Then we'll have to interview her, too. Ah, yes, you're right. She may have been the last person to see him alive, after all. I'll ask Sumida to introduce us tomorrow. Though, who knows if they'll actually let us talk with her. That's what we hired you for. Lay a little boyish charm on them if they need convincing. Ah, yeah, I'm sure they'd prefer me over a scary-looking old man like you, boss. Watch it. I'm still your superior. You ought to act like you respect me, at least. Oh, I thought I was. You were? Shit, is that just how your generation speaks? You really are a new breed. Eh, it's probably just me, actually. 
Ah, well, don't think you can get away with that with other people. So anyways, boss, were you even listening? You've got quite a bit to look into tomorrow. First, the two Kamagata high, high school cases that Hajime was handling. And we need to speak with his fiance as well. I believe it, it, that's it for tomorrow. Oh my god, that was a lot. Uh, case notes regarding the death of Hajime uh, Yoshimi officer with the Sumida police. Body found at former Yasuda Gardens. Estimated time of death two days prior at approximately 11 a.m. Cause of death, acute heart failure, cause unknown. Signs of a struggle found at the scene. Efforts to locate witnesses underway. Body discovered by groundskeeper. Currently investigating the fiance of the deceased and two female students from Kamagata High School that the deceased had contact with as persons of interest. As for the cause of death, we won't know until the autopsy is done. From what we've seen, though, it appears to be some kind of acute heart failure. But since he had no record of chronic illness, he had no visible wounds, it's possible that poison or drugs could have, been, could have been involved. Dying in the middle of a park like that, it certainly seems suspicious. We found signs of a struggle at the scene, as well as footprints belonging to an unidentified individual. We've got people trying to identify those prints. If we can find who they belong to, we might be able to figure out this whole thing. Yes, wouldn't that be nice if that were the end of it? The only things Hajime had on him were his badge and his wallet and his pockets. So, we can roll out a mugging. Though there probably aren't many people who'd think uh, to try mugging a cop as big as him. I've also heard that Hajime got into a fair few fights in his younger days. He started judo once he became an officer and rose up the ranks quickly. Sounds like the perp would have, had, would have been pretty strong to take on Hajime. Time of death was around 11pm two days ago, outside of the park's operating hours, of course. His body was found early in the morning yesterday. 11 p.m. the day before yesterday. What was Hajime doing out here at that time in the first place? That's the question, isn't it? The entrance to the park is closed after all hours, but it's a small gate that'd be fairly easy for him to get through if he really wanted to. That would, of course, be breaking and entering, but what do you think, boss? It's hard to imagine a cop like Hajime would trespass for no reason. And since it seems like someone else was here with him, could they have been called? Could they have called him there? Oh, that does seem likely. They must have been talking about something pretty sensitive to come here in the middle of the night. So Hajime met someone here to discuss something in secret, and then they got into a fight. No, that wouldn't match the cause of death. There is no, there were no wounds on the body that would indicate a spontaneous scuffle. Perp must have planned something. Then you think it was meditated? That would mean they called Hajime to the park with the intent to kill him. Well, there is still the possibility that it was just some kind of accident. Maybe the perp tried to threaten Hajime and things went south from there. We should be able to get a clearer picture once we know exactly what killed him. Right. But either way, I'm so glad you're back in the first division, boss. I've always admired your work. You were like a god to me. You were the whole reason I became a detective in the first place. Ah, yeah, about that. People have been saying that ever since you first entered the academy, but... Yes, that's because it's true. I couldn't believe you got transferred out of the first just as I was assigned to it. So getting to work a case like this now, just the two of us, is a dream come true. Happy as I am to hear that, uh... How should I put it? What is it? If that's true, I'm not sure you've been showing me the appropriate amount of respect. Huh? But I do respect you. Don't tell me you're gonna going senile, boss. That's exactly what I'm talking about, when you run your mouth like that. It's getting late. You must be sleepy. Don't worry, boss. I'll make sure we get out of here soon. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I've been wowed by your shrewd detecting abilities all day today. Oh, really? Funny. I've been wowed by you, too. On the topic of family, what's yours like, boss? The hell is wrong with you, prying into my personal life all of a sudden? It's just, I've never heard you talk about them or anything. Oh, are you single? Shut it. That's none of your business. Well, ever since I joined the force, I've been thinking. The department really pressures young officers into getting married. I wonder why that is. You don't say anything like that, though. How should I know? I caved to the pressure myself and got married 20-some years ago. Huh? So then... God, you're relentless. She took our daughter and left four years ago. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't believe she'd give up a guy like you. Eh, I was never home much. Too focused on work. I come home late only to get called right back out again. Plus, 
being a cop is dangerous work. I don't blame her for getting fed up with it at all. How sad, especially when you're out here putting your life on the line. Oh, is that why you transferred out of the first? It was already too late by then. You better be careful, Ario. You say that, but there's not much I can do, is there? That's the nature of our job. There aren't many who can really understand it, not unless they're involved with police work themselves or related to someone who is. But wait, you have a daughter, boss. You really think I want to talk about her after all that? Have some sense. Come on. I promise I don't mean this uh, the way it sounds, but how old is she? Jeez, you don't know when to quit, do you? At least try not to look so intrigued. She's... Well, she's a bit rough around the edges. I think most men are intimidated by her. Unless I heard she's living by herself and going to college. Wow, a college student. Men love an educated lady. Stop that. What kind of cop are you making baseless assumptions like that? She's living on her own though, huh? You must worry about her. Worry? I don't even know where she lives. Oh, so she hasn't told you? Probably because she knows you'd follow her around everywhere. I would not! I don't think. Come on now, we both know that's not true. Listen here. You may look like a mean old man, but you sure have a soft side. What? Is that supposed to be a compliment? I can't keep up with you. We're done talking about this. Oh, that reminds me. If you got married 20 years ago, it must have been right out around the Nejima murder. You know your history. Yeah, that happened a year or two after our wedding. You were the one who arrested the killer, weren't you? We studied that case in the academy. I was only in elementary school at the time, but I still remember people talking about some dangerous criminal getting arrested. All that was just... Cracking the case, finding the guy. It was all just ha happenstance. I'd really rather not think about it. It was a disturbing case. Did it not make your skin crawl when you learned about it at the academy? It did. We were all terrified. Sounds about right. No one could believe that such a mild-mannered man could have committed such a terrible murder. If we had overlooked one little thing, we may never have caught him at all. I think I remember hearing there was only one charge brought against him in the end. That's right. We didn't have the evidence. I knew there was no way such a meticulously planned crime could have been there first, but... We may have stuck F uh, Fuma Chika Nijima in a cell, but it was no victory. He always had the upper hand. And all the damage he did to everyone involved, especially the victim's classmates. It's already been 20 years, huh? God damn it. This is why I try not to think about it. I'm sorry. The Nejima murders, a notorious case from over two decades ago involving the murder of a female high school student, it first came to the attention of authorities when part of a human left hand was discovered floating in the Sumida River. <laughs> Testing revealed it belonged to a missing female high school student. As it appeared to have been de uh, severed deliberately, the police launched a murder investigation. A large-scale search of the river was organized, but the highly polluted state of the water made this impossible. <clears throat> impossible. Visibility was poor, the stench was intense, and the divers quickly fell ill. They succeeded in... Come on. Recovering only the victim's head and what appeared to be part of her leg before the search was called off. At the time of the incident, the Sumida River was as polluted as, as it had ever been. Neither fish nor shell... shell Neither fish nor shellfish could survive in it, eventually causing the annual fireworks festival to be called off indefinitely. Can I... I can't. Over the course of the search, the police discovered a number of unidentified human bones. This caused a stir among the public, as several other young women had gone missing in recent years in the Tokyo area, and it was feared that they may have fallen victim to the same fate. Forensic technologies at the time, however, were not advanced enough to determine the identities of the deceased, and so the police were unable to open any inquiries. Due to the overwhelming lack of circumstantial evidence, the investigation ground to a halt until a hitherto unrelated individual came to its attention. During questioning about a separate incident, Fumachika Nijima, a 36-year-old shop owner with no relation to the victim, divulged details about her that had never been released to the general public. Investigation into his background was conducted, leading to his arrest. Nijima testified that he had snatched his victim from the street and confined her in the underground storeroom of his shop, which also served as his living quarters. He chose her for no special reason, but simply decided she was an opportune target on seeing her walking alone at night. After keeping her locked up for several days, he restrained her, sewed her mouth shut, and severed her fingers and toes with a box cutter while she was still conscious. As she screamed silently behind her sealed lips, he proceeded to her wrists, her ankles, her elbows, her knees, working his way inward slowly and methodically. His victim constantly wavered in and out of consciousness. Her ordeal continued until she died of blood loss. 
Phew. Nijima dismembered the rest of her body and disposed of it behind his home in the Sumida River before cleaning his storeroom and returning to his everyday routine, as if nothing had happened. The brutality of his actions shocked the nation when they were eventually reported. Once apprehended, Nijima uh, readily divulged the details of the murder, but was less willing to explain his motive. When asked, he would only break down in tears, saying, I don't know what came over me. I know it was wrong. In the end, the police could extract nothing more from him than the expressions of remorse. Although the efficiency of his methods strongly suggested that he had committed similar crimes in the past, no corroborating evidence ever came to light. Nejima was sentenced to life in prison at his first hearing. The sentence was imposed with no appeal from the defendant. Oh my god, this is a lot of reading. <clears throat> so all this occult stuff, have you heard about it, boss? What are you talking about? This rite of resurrection thing that everyone's talking about. No, not you two. I've been hearing about that shit everywhere. Oh, you have? That's surprising. Who cares what people are talking about? It's got nothing to do with our job. But don't you think the occult stuff with this case feels, I don't know, realer somehow? The whole thing started right here in Hanjo in Sumida City, so I thought that maybe... Cut it out. Nothing good can come of getting involved with this rite of whatever, that record of fates. Sounds like you know all about it. Boss, are you secretly into the occult? Stop that. Seriously, this isn't a joke. I get why you'd be intrigued by something called the Rite of Resurrection after a buddy of yours died, but bringing the dead back to life, that's the stuff of fantasy. It's not real. So don't go hoping for miracles, got it? Well, boss, I think that about does it. Right, let's call it for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh God, what is that? Huh? Boss, what's wrong? Don't tell me you're getting senile. Uh, it is no rumor. Uh, the true lie, believe me. Do not be fooled. I can't read the bottom one. Boss, what is it? Is there something over there? Ugh! Such deep sorrow, a resentful memory is flowing into my mind. Those who deceive with falsehoods and un until they are hung up forever in eternal darkness. Kill them. Kill them. Those who spread lies. Kill them all. You have acquired the power to cur of the cursed stone, the evergreen beach. You can use it to kill those who intentionally try to mislead you. Press the use curse button when someone lies to you. An enduring superstition. <clears throat> Once upon a time in North Okurabashi, a beautiful beech tree stood in the garden. Uh, we already read this. Curse power. Kills by hanging one who tries to mislead the curse bearer with false statements. Resentful memory. He deceived us with his so-called rite of resurrection. The man who tricked the people with his false dark arts swings from a rope. They thought the man had escaped the previous night, but oddly enough, he was found hanging in the garden of the daimyo's mansion that morning. The man, a local named Jinkichi, was known for his kind temperament and skill in crafting Natsuke clasps. While his life wasn't always easy, he was optimistic, the type to smile through whatever life threw at him. He was the kind of man who would take care of those who didn't have anything else to rely on. Anyone else to rely on. The prosperity that the ukiyo-e boom brought must have been fans... Uh, must have been what fanned the flames of his greed. The old craftsman was found in a miserable state, as if sentenced to some cruel fate. Perhaps he'd ended his own life, unable to bear the weight of his crime. But dead men tell no tales. The people thought of him as a bad man even in death. He hung there for days till his neck stretched terrifically, a visage of pain still etched in his face. It was clear he must have struggled greatly as he died, his flesh marked with dark scars where the ropes wrapped around his whole body. The beech tree's leaves do not fall, and neither did the man's body hang from it, as the mansion's owner was not at home. Another unfortunate event. The people held their tongues, fearing divine punishment, but the rumors persisted nonetheless. Ugh. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now, kill. Can you hear it, Curse Bearer? You who so strongly desire the right, kill them. Boss, boss. Boss, what's the matter? Don't tell me you really went senile. Sorry, I'm fine. 
Ariel. Yes? I have some bad news. Oh no, your senility is kicking in, isn't it? No. We've got a bit of trouble on our hands. Looks like we'll be working some overtime. We're not going home tonight. Huh? What are you talking about? Uh, Satsumi and Jun are sorting through the facts of the scene of Officer Hajime Yoshimi's mysterious death. Satsumi denies the existence of the Rite of Resurrection until the curse echo of the Evergreen Beach appears before them. Tetsuo Satsumi, 12 a.m. Former Yasuda Gardens. Okay, so let me get this straight, boss. The Rite of Resurrection really exists. And to use it, you have to kill people using the power of curses from the Seven Mysteries of Honcho. And the curse you have is from the story of the Evergreen Beach that's told in this area. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. You're quick on the uptake. You weren't your usual silly self when you were explaining, so I knew you were telling the truth. I'm never silly. The only thing I have trouble believing is that you're taking this occult stuff seriously now. I mean, talk about paranormal. I thought you didn't believe in any of that. It's not that I don't believe in it. My familiarity with it is why I've tried not to get too close. Are you, are you just being a sore loser? Not used to admitting you were wrong? Oh, shut up and listen to me. No point in trying to hide things anymore. We won't get anywhere if you don't understand this, so listen up. Please, just listen. You don't have to keep saying it. I'm listening. We don't have time to waste. We'll talk as we walk. Hey, hey, wait for me, boss. Uh, sorry, I just want to double check one thing. You're telling the truth, right? This isn't a side effect of your senility? It's the truth. Not like I can prove it, though. Revealing the existence of a secret department is against the rules, even to a failed cop. But this is an emergency. I need his help. I'll tell him. I'm sure you already know this, but this is all top secret. No sharing with anyone. Right. You can trust me not to. But, no, I just can't believe it. I'd heard rumors that you used to be a member of a secret division attached to the security bureau. Can't believe we actually have a department called Paranormal Affairs. Yeah, I'm sure it comes as a shock. I couldn't believe it myself. I thought the higher-ups were messing with me. Really had me worried for a while there. No, this is incredible. That's the whole reason I became a cop. I was always fascinated by secret agencies and stuff. You serious? But thinking about it, it totally makes sense. If curses and spirits really do exist, then of course we need a special department to protect citizens from them. You seem a bit too eager to believe all of this. And hang on, I thought you joined up because of me. Come on, boss. Do you only have one favorite food? You can like more than one thing. Yeah, yeah, whatever. In any case, the official stance is that the supernatural doesn't exist, so paranormal affairs operates in secret. Still not sure why they stuck me there. Those four years, I worked nothing but cases involving the supernatural. Although officially called the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department Security Division Special Security Unit, Paranormal Affairs Bureau, it is only commonly referred to as Paranormal Affairs. Only a handful of people know of its, its existence, even within the police force. As the name suggests, it specializes in the investigation and in resolution of cases involving paranormal phenomena. Since the existence of paranormal phenomena is not public knowledge, nor is it readily believed by the general population, the Bureau's activities are conducted in the utmost secret secrecy. Currently, there are only five members, including the chief. The Bureau has a network of psychics con uh, psychic contacts across the country who assist with their cases, including Mio Kurosuzu. The Bureau undertakes investigations into any suspicious stories that cross their desk, though the vast majority turn out to be hoaxes. Due to the sheer volume of cases, closed-lipped, experienced detectives without paranormal abilities of their own, such as Tetsuo Satsumi, are sometimes assigned to investigate. 
The current chief of paranormal affairs is a man named Kiru Nakagoshi. He was born to a family of psychics who have been involved in keeping the world safe from paranormal phenomena for generations and has served as Mio uh, Kurosuzu's mentor since discovering her. Kiru is an, an elusive figure. Very few have met him in person and he is rarely seen in the office. It is said that this is because he has oft been the target of curses. However, some theorize that it is in fact because Kiuru is not actually a flesh and blood at all. His seat in the office is usually occupied by a nue, a legendary creature found in Japanese folklore. The nue resembles an ordinary white thrush and acts as Kiuru's messenger, leading to bizarre scenes of police officers earnestly reporting their findings to a bird. The term Nakagoshi case uh, serves as a code name used to refer to cases under investigation by paranormal affairs. Rather than sitting behind a desk, Chief Inspector Satsumi always worked in the field and as he moved his way up the police force. Behind his stern face lies a compassionate man, ever prepared to help his fellow officers. That same attentiveness to his work and colleagues, however, cost Tetsuo his marriage several years ago. Tetsuo has a penchant for candy and desserts, which he tries but fails to conceal from other officers at the risk of appearing soft. He delights in buying local sweets wherever he is sent to investigate a case, and would often volunteer to be dispatched to distant locations to acquire them while he is working with the Paranormal Affairs Bureau. He is also surprisingly knowledgeable about current trends, a trait he puts down to investigate related research, but which is actually spurred by his wish to have something to discuss with his daughter. Born to a relatively well-off household, Jun developed a healthy sense of self-esteem and an optimistic outlook on life. Although watching action movies and detective series as a child instilled in him a desire to help those in need, it was with the sight of Tetsuo Satsumi, who was in charge of the investigating a case Jun was involved in as a student, that truly inspired him to become a police officer. Uh, while Jun still maintains a strong respect for Tetsuo, he also gets much enjoyment out of making casual cracks to get a rise out of the veteran officer. As an adult, Jun continues to hold on to his faint hope that the world is as he pictures in his youth, a thrilling place in which superhuman heroes do battle against secret evil organizations. He had ended the police academy with Richter Kai, who is now a private investigator. The two initially became friends when Jun found Richter holed up alone in the reference room, scouring over old crime data, and invited him to go bowling, a popular pastime during the era. So, uh, Jun and Richter were friends, so that's their... their uh, that's the connection to, um, what's her name? I can't remember her name right now. Um, and then the case is tied to the high school girl. So do you, you know, have it? Have what? Spirit sense, of course. Are you what they call spiritually gifted? Nope. I've never felt anything at all. Even if I did, I'd be a lightweight at best. One beer and I'm down for the count. Oh. Huh. Is that how people in the field quantify someone's spirit sense? Like how much uh, liquor they can handle? No, that's just me. Thought it'd help get the point across. Oh. Huh. Sorry, seems like I keep disappointing you. No, it's not your fault, boss. At the risk of disappointing you yet again, I'll tell you one more thing. Spirit sense is usually something you're born with. It's tough to develop it later on. What? So there's no hope for me? No, say it isn't so. Of course you were interested. Well, you never know. You may have some hi hidden potential. I know there's a high schooler who's got so much spirit sense that she works on the front lines. I say work, but she wasn't paid because it was supposedly part of her training. Yikes. That seems like it'd be in violation of the Article 69 of the Labor Standards Act. Wow, you really know the law. No comment. Nice, by the way. Even the occult has uh, workers' rights issues, huh? He's not stupid, but he sure can be slow sometimes. Though I think that positivity of his may come in handy at some point. Hmm? Someone's watching us. Doesn't seem like they're going to run. Let's uh, just keep an eye on them for now. All right, that has a check mark. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Um, so, what do we do now? 
We've got this rite of resurrection and the curse echoes of the seven mysteries of Hanjo. The curses being spread out around the city is a bit of an emergency. Is that, it's that bad? I'll put it this way. It's like handing out guns all over town. Jeez, that's real bad. It is, so we need to find the source and put a stop to it before something terrible happens. Usually, that'd be a job for paranormal affairs, but I talked to them on our way over here. The main team is tied up until tomorrow morning. So they told me to deal with it myself. Said it'd be fine since I have some experience. Huh? What? Then that overtime you mentioned means, yep, you're going to help me, partner. All right, let's do this. Uh, you seem a bit too eager to dive into all this. You really have no reservations working in case you know nothing about. You said this was an emergency. I didn't think we had a choice. I'm just trying to be logical about this, boss. You really are something. It might ac actually be nice having you around. Why, thank you. So, what exactly do we do? These curses are connected to the seven mysteries, and the people who have the others, uh, then the people who have the others should all be here in town. Right, if there's seven of them, that means there are six more out there. And we have to stop them all before they kill anyone with their curses. If we can, we should find and collect all the curse stones. But boss, what you said earlier, killing a curse bearer gets you closer to completing the rite of resurrection. Won't your life be in danger if they find out you're a curse bearer? Pretty much. We can't let that happen. Should you even be uh, out here right now? Hiding would only be a waste of time. The mystery of the one-sided reed is associated with Ryo Goku Bridge. I was hoping we'd be quick enough to run into the one-sided reed's curse bearer. No such luck, it seems. Well, if nothing else, maybe word will spread that the cops are on the lookout and people will behave. That's putting a lot of trust in whoever these pe other people are. But it's possible the other curse bearers with the, uh, the same idea will come here. Talk to anyone you see who seems suspicious. Irk. That means someone who may have the power of a curse. Understood. In that case... Why don't I ask that guy who's been watching us this whole time? Ah, you noticed him too. Well, good luck. Hey, you there. Sorry to bother you, but I've got some questions. I'm with the police. Thanks for your cooperation. We'll be asking you a few things, Mr. Yutaro Nam Namagaki. That's your name, right? Uh, yes. I don't mind answering your questions. You're a detective. Did something happen? Oh, right. Lots of things have been happening around here. Like people dying. Boss, let's talk to this guy. So, what to make of this guy? So, what is it you were doing here? Ah, uh, it must be the incident at the former Yasuda Gardens, the dead policeman. Can't imagine a detective would come all the way out here otherwise. Huh? Say, Mr. Detective, have you ever heard of the Evergreen Beach? How about you answer my question first? What were you doing here? I was answering your question. I came here to look for the Evergreen Beach from the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Actually, I was wondering if either of you knew anything about it. If it's the Evergreen Beach you're after, you'd be better off looking around the former Yasuda Gardens in here. Oh, you know a lot about this. But that's what I thought. Detectives, you have the curse stone of the Evergreen Beach, don't you? How did you know? Ario, you idiot. <laughs> well, that was much easier than expected. Oh, crap. Sorry. It was simple inference. I figured you would have taken the curse if you were just in the gardens. If you know that, then... You must be a curse bearer yourself. I have no intentions of hiding anything. I plan to tell you from the start. Look. This is my curse stone. I believe it's called the Foot Washing Mansion. That's right. But are you sure about this? I'm not so rash that I'd kill someone as soon as I found out... Uh, they were a curse bearer, not without talking to them first. You're the same, aren't you, detective? You wouldn't use a curse on an old person. Let's speak as equals, shall we? Boss? Sure. We'd rather res resolve this amicably, too. But before we talk, there's something I should tell you. Hmm? This is my curse stone, the Evergreen Beach, just like you thought. What? What? Boss, why would you tell him? Ask for how the curse works. Boss, are you having another senior moment? If you tell him that... It hangs to death anyone who would try to mislead me. So if you try to lie to me, the curse stone will let me know. I don't have to use it to tell, understand? Whoa, really? That's super useful. 
I see. Understood. That's a pretty useful power for a detective. Now then, let's talk. Damn, it seems I've lost the upper hand. No point for petty tricks then. I'll be honest with you. So far, so good. There's someone I want to bring back, so I'd like your assistance, assistance in collecting soul drags. Can't help you. Please, all you'd have to do is tell me who the other curse bearers are. Sorry, but as a police officer, I can't just look the other way and let you go. Please, if you help me, I'll let you two go as well. Is that a threat? No. It's your final warning. Ugh, my curse, the foot washing mansion. Did you really think you could escape it just by being careful? It didn't matter to me which of you was the curse bearer. I'll be taking both of your soul drugs anyway. Wait, Namagaki! The foot washing mansion is a powerful curse, and so simple to activate. It is ready whenever I need it. There is no escape from the voice of my feet. Ariel, get out of here. Hurry, I'll find you later. What? Okay. Too late. Hear the voice of my curse echo. Mm, the voice of this curse echo. What? Why isn't my curse echo working? Impossible. This has never happened. What's happening? I don't hear anything. Ario, now, grab him. Right. Namagaki, get down. Ah, damn it. Boss, here, his curse stone. Good work. Give it to me. Damn it, why? What do you think, boss? Should we lock him up? I haven't even touched you. You can't consider that assault of a police officer. Let him go. All we know is all we need is the stone. Ah, uh, how could this happen? My right of resurrection. Give it up. The right was too good to be true from the start. I don't know what happened to you, but you'd be better off mourning whoever you lost the, the right way. Now get out of here. Damn it. Phew, that was a close one, huh, boss? We'd probably be dead if he had activated his curse. Yeah, I'm not sure what, but something stopped his curse from... Ugh. Boss, are you okay? Does having another curse stone hurt? Yeah, the curse from this one is flowing into me too. Oh no. I saw what activates the curse of the foot washing mansion, and the resentful memories bound to it. Ah, I see. I always thought this was uh, this one was one of the stranger of the seven mysteries. Now I know why. This sure is something. What did you see? Let's save that for later. All you need to know for now is that it's a particularly powerful curse. We're lucky we took it from him quickly. Phew. Uh, kills by crushing one who hears the command. Wash. She was an accomplished on Miyoji. Alas, she did not use her talents for the good of the world or the people, but for her own selfish pursuit of beauty. After a fierce battle, the woman dragged herself through the streets. It was like something had gnawed away at her body. Will I die? I've already obtained what I needed, as long as I have this. Suddenly, a terrible realization dawned on her. Her legs wouldn't move. She fell to the ground. What was happening? Surprised, she looked down. Her foot, once so beautiful and delicate, had grown ulcerated and rotten. He got her. She was on the verge of death and covered in filth to boot. Crawling to a nearby house, her breath caught in her throat. The curious residents opened up, but recoiled from what they saw. My foot is so filthy. Someone, please, quickly. The woman expired while mumbling something unintelligible, and so ended the life of a woman consumed by evil. Well, that makes one stone. Where'd we go now? We'll visit all the places associated with the mysteries while it's still dark out. You mean we have to do all that? Uh, we have to do that all over again? I hope they aren't all as aggressive as him, but people will do crazy things to bring back, bring back someone they love. It seems that the hatred the curse stones are imbued with makes people more willing to kill. Really? Then what about you, boss? I'm fine. I may not have any spirit sense, but I'm tough when it comes to the stuff. That's why they love me in paranormal affairs. So you are spiritually gifted after all. All right, let's head to the next place. Satsumi and Ario decide to collect the curse stones as soon as possible before they become the cause of an unprecedented tragedy. The two obtain the foot washing mansion from the Utaro Namagaki and head to their next destination.
Tetsuo Satsumi, 1 a.m. Midori Show Park. Excuse me, sorry to bother you, but we have some questions for you. Who are you? What? Are, are you with the police? I haven't done anything. Don't worry, this isn't an interrogation or anything. We just want to talk. You're Hideki Ara Ishii, right? The historian? We know who you are, so this won't take long. But since we saw you here, we'd like to ask you a couple questions. Hideki is a historian who works part-time as a curator at the local folk museum and as a teacher at Kamigata High School. His recently publication on the right of the resurrection has caused a stir in occult circles. Hideki is a quintessential obsessive researcher. Despite being entirely unsuited for teaching, he had no choice but to take up the position at Kamigata High School in order to make ends meet. While having a captive audience in his classes goes some way to satisfying his need for respect and recognition, his conceited nature makes him unpopular among the students. Lately, he is concerned that the articles he contributed for purely monetary reasons reasons have earned him a reputation as a researcher of the occult, but the surge of interest in the topic and the resulting volume of articles, uh, re article requests he is receiving are undeniably tempting. Hideki is a regular at the Kirikikyo Cafe on Hakusai Street, where he can be found outside his work hours writing essays and manuscripts. His published books include A Study of the Unknown and An Introduction to Bando History. Yutaro is an elite student at a prestigious university. Excuse me. Yutaro is an elite student at a prestigious university. He lives off the generous allowance he receives from his parents, who are both prominent local figures. Although Yutaro has lived a charmed material life, emotional neglect at home has caused him to develop a spoiled egotistical streak. The only kindness he knew growing up was from his family's maid, and he still fondly thinks of his plain rice with butter they used to enjoy together. Well, let's get this over with. I'm a busy man. Questioning people like this can put unnecessary stress on them, depending on their position. This guy is pretty sharp, I'll have to play it safe and only push him when I see an opening. Hideki Era Ishii. He says he's a local historian, but supposedly he knows more about the Rite of Resurrection than anybody. The fact that he's here at this time of night, it's plenty possible that he's a curse bearer. What were you doing? Now, Mr. Era Ishii, what were you doing here at this time of night? Doing research, of course. Day or night, information never sleeps. That's an admirable philosophy. You know, your research has been quite a talk around town. What was it they were saying? You discovered something about some book? Record of Fates? Ah, right, you found some kind of ritual in the Record of Fates. What? Don't tell me you want to know how to carry out the Rite of Resurrection, too. To be perfectly honest, I'm tired of people asking me about it all the time. None of you even care about the local history. You just, you just come crawling out of the woodwork when something interesting comes up. Looks like I hit a nerve. If you think you can force me to tell you because you're a policeman, you're sorely mistaken. Uh, we already got that. Uh, it doesn't look like we can go anywhere else. Was the research you were doing just now also related to the right of resurrection? Well, yes, that's right. What exactly were you looking for? I have no reason to tell you that. You wouldn't understand anyway. Was the research you were doing just now related to Red Resurrection? Why does it? Are you doing all this research so that you can use the Red Resurrection yourself? Hmm, you're a policeman. Do you really think people can be brought back to life? Everyone I meet, pitiful. Ah, huh, so you don't believe in the right. Whether it's real or not has nothing to do with my research. Such things are better left to the occult freaks. Or so I thought. Hmm? Things changed. It has become necessary for me to pursue the right. So now, now I pray that it is real. What changed? I'm sure you can imagine the funds for my research. I receive a large amount of funding for seeking the right of resurrection. And if I find it, I'll receive a sum so great that I'll never have to worry about money again. Oh, then that means someone is sponsoring your research. Is that right? So what if they are? 
You have no idea how hard we work to secure funding for our research. I have no interest in teaching those children. Listen to me, I'll tell you one thing. Those experts you see writing provocative books or spouting nonsense on TV to try and get popular, all of them are just trying to get the money they need to do their research. With how popular the occult is, saying something even remotely spooky can lead to big money. What? But I bought your book. The pursuit of the unknown begins first and foremost with belief. I was so inspired by that bit. I do appreciate your patronage. Unfortunately, however, the occult is not my true interest. The fate of the unknown is to be destroyed by thorough research and deep consideration. No way. I can't believe it. You're surprisingly innocent. Uh, then what kind of research do you want to be doing? Hmm. I'm sure it wouldn't interest you, but to put it simply, Focus of my research is how historical accounts transform into folklore over the years as they are passed down from generation to generation. What does that mean? Due to human bias, the account of any event is inevitably changed by the person communicating it. This is not necessarily done with ill intentions. It happens when someone tries to fill in the gaps in a story that lacks detail, or when something's left out of or uh, left out or abridged because of the story's length, or when a story twists and shifts as it's spread through oral tradition. Even when two stories are told about the same event, differences in culture or environment affect how it's told, changing its context. Silly little things can turn into terribly mysterious legends. My research is the study of how history, culture, and legend all influence each other. Ah, huh, I see. Take the seven mysteries of Hanjo, for example. Why are some of the mysteries seemingly about nothing particularly interesting? You'd think stories wouldn't last a decade, let alone hundreds of years. So why? Perhaps putting it that way piques your interest. I admit I am cur curious. So that what's So that's what you've been researching all this time. Makes sense. As I said, it doesn't matter to me whether the right exists or not. If people in the Edo period believe that what was written in the Record of Fates was real, that's all I'm interested in. But I have to be realistic. The research I'd like to do is unfortunately not very lucrative. That's why I need to take some risks. This record of fates, where did you get your hands on it? The storehouse of an old private residence in the city, just as the public was told. I'm unable to be more precise due to an agreement with my informant. Well, in that case, I think I might have a guess as to what it is you were looking for. Huh, I'm surprised you know that. There is indeed a theory that the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo began because of the Rite of the Resurrection. Well, my theory, unraveling the Seven Mysteries may reveal the secret of the Rite. I think quite a few people are looking into the mysteries for that reason. Midorisho Park is connected to the story of the Taiko of Sugaru, Sugu, Sugaru, right? That's right, but that isn't the issue at hand. Damn it, if you know about that, then calm down. No need to get so defensive. We both want information, right? Why don't we have a nice, friendly chat? A curse stone? You are a curse bearer. A leaf. It is, it is the evergreen beach, then. Yep. Will you show me yours? This is mine, the ever-burning lantern. Hmm. Interesting. I won't miss mince words. I'd like to confiscate your curse down. Excuse me, you may be a policeman, but you have no right to do that. The police are aware of how dangerous the stones are. I could arrest you under Article 1, Section 2 of the Minor Offenses Act. Or you hand it over and all that you lose is your secret ability. Think of what would happen to all your research if you were arrested. Hmm, I call your bluff. The stones could never be used as evidence. If you want it, you'll have to take it by force. I find it hard to imagine that an officer of the law would use a curse on a citizen. You can't touch me, which means I have no reason to continue this conversation. Sorry, I'll be taking my leave here. Hey, stop! Hmm, boss, he's so fast. Sorry, boss, he got away. Incomplete.
Come on. I'll tell you this for free. The Evergreen Beach comes from a man who was hanged for spreading false rumors, but the accusations against him were unfounded and he died cursing those who deceived him. Ah, so that is the resentful memory held within the Evergreen Beach. The memories of the seven mysteries are truly fascinating. If only I could collect them all. Do whatever you want, but you should know something. This stone of mine lets me curse anyone who tries to mislead me. What? But... So don't try and lie to me. I'll know. You... you would curse a citizen? And you call yourself an officer of the law. That all depends on you. I don't want to use it if I don't have to. What is it you want? The cursed stones are dangerous. I'd like to confiscate yours. Excuse me, but my right. First, let me ask you one thing. You, you haven't used that curse, have you? No, of course I haven't, I swear. I see, good. Now, why don't you hand over that stone? Unless you'd rather try using it on me instead. Damn you, I won't give it to you. If I were to say that, what would happen? Would it be a crime? The police are aware of how dangerous the stones are. I could arrest you under Article 1... Fine. You can have the stone. Here. Cursed Stone Acquired, the Ever-Burning Lantern. Kills by disembowelment one who finds themselves trapped in the darkness of the Cursed Echo. When Hanjo is filled with the samurai residences, the spies of the shogunate, leave, uh, shogunate lived amongst the townspeople to keep an eye on things. The Soba cart on South Wira Gesui served as one of their outposts. They would communicate to each other in code by turning the lantern on or off. Tonight at 4 a.m. meant that someone would be having the last Soba of their life and that their belly would be sliced open the next night. An unfortunate incident occurred in which a man attacked a woman in a bout of fury. He regretted it deeply, even declining to invoke the right to defend his honor. But the deed was done. Still, he could not accept it. His rage at having been used by his daimyo boiled over, turning into a grudge he would never forget. Nearby, he saw a lantern quietly glowing at night, uh, quietly glowing in the night, and when the sixth bell rang, the man cut his own stomach open. Since then, the lantern could be seen alight before the soba card had opened, and would flicker out suddenly even when there was no wind blowing. As the sun-settling phenomena continued, the rumors surrounding it grew, and soon all were convinced that it was uh, the man who cut open his stomach visiting from the beyond. Good choice. I look forward to seeing how your research pans out. Hmm. <laughs> all right. Would you tell us everything you know about what's been going on? If you help us out, we'll give you all the information we've gotten after we solve the case. What do you say? In that case, will you tell me about all the resentful memories of the seven mysteries? I believe they are the key to the secret hidden in the record of fates. Sure. Why not? I'll learn about them as I collect the curse stones. But thanks to you, we learned a lot, of, uh, a lot from him. I wonder. The mysteries and right are all public information. He kept everything he knows about the other curse bearers and the source of the curse here hidden. I was hoping he'd at least give us a clue about how to beat these curses. Oh, I see. Then we shouldn't be more aggressive next time. Really make them spit it out. And by we, I mean you. I'm guessing he wants to save this curse. He wouldn't have told us anything, no matter what we asked. But now we know where he hangs out. We can always send someone for him if need be. Right, got it. I was surprised to hear that there are actually nine of the seven mysteries, though. Yeah, that's two extra curse bearers we have to find. We've confiscated two, so there are six more. Uh, they could be anywhere in this town. We have to find them fast, or they might start using curses. No, I think we're already too late. Huh? I didn't tell you this, but there were some soul dregs in Namagaki's curse stone. Really? Then he already killed someone with it. It's not much, so it probably wasn't a curse bearer. Shit. Well, we know who did it. We can make arrangements to take him into custody. We'll have paranormal affairs pick him up tomorrow. For, for now, we continue our search. Right, on to the next place. We just have to cross them off the list one by one. It seems like uh, we can get through this entire section without killing anybody. So I'm going to try to get through this entire section without killing anybody. Oh, but, uh, boss. Hmm? Good to know we can use the Minor Offenses Act to arrest people with curse stones. But why didn't we do that with Namagaki? If we could do that, there'd be no need for paranormal affairs. What grounds would a normal detective have to put him under arrest? All right. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Mm. 
Oh, that's the end of that one. Can't go any further right now. There's not a second route it doesn't look like. I guess let's start on Yako. Yaku Sakazaki, 12 a.m. Kamagata High School. That should be everything. Okay, let's start. Ready for this, Yaku? Okay, I'm ready. Yako Sakazaki. Yako is a student in class 2C at Kamagata High School. Unable to comprehend why her childhood friend and classmate, Michio uh, Shira Ishii, committed suicide, she attempted to investigate the incident herself. However, she was unable to make any progress and, feeling desperate, invited transfer student Mio Kuro Suzu to join her in performing a spirit board ritual. Born and raised in Hanjo, Sumida City, Yako's family has owned and operated the beloved candy shop Sonoya since its establishment in the early Showa era. Despite her modest appearance, Yako is cheerful and vivacious, uh, is a cheerful and vivacious young woman with a sense of duty and compassion so strong that she is easily moved to tears. She is also a bit quick tempered and quarrelsome, always prepared to stand up against those who harm her, family or friends. It is possible, however, that this readiness to fight is more driven by an innate love of chaos. Yako's winning streak against arrogant boys and scraps since she was a child remains unbroken and is the source of considerable stress for her mother. She seems like she's doing fine. Uh, Kamagata High School, a co-educational municipal high school with 632 attendees. Excuse me. Its name is commonly shortened to Koma High School. Although it is, uh, it opened as Hanjo First Middle School in 1943, subsequent revisions to its enrollment policy saw it changing its name, becoming Kamagata High School. The school strives to instill its students with the three S's of Sumida, sound morals, social responsibility, and strength of spirit. But success has been limited. Plagued by delinquency, it has been forced to turn to temporary employees to compensate for its high staff turnover. And its sports clubs face challenges with its inner city location and small campus. Its traditional culture research club is thriving, however, even issuing... Regular bulletins in collaboration with the local records office. Is that all? That was all. All right, let's start. This is the spirit board. This is how we'll be communicating. First, we'll both put a finger on the 10 yen coin that's on the board. Like this. Just like that. Relax your finger as much as you can. Now, for the chant, repeat what I say, okay? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, please visit us. Your turn. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Spectre of the Spirit Board, Spectre of the Spirit Board, please visit us. Good. Please tell us if you are there. Whoa, it really moved. Looks like we succeeded in the summoning. We can ask questions now. Right, questions. Start with a question you know the answer to and see the response. Then, when you know your questions are being answered truthfully, you ask what you really want to know. Okay, I'll start with something simple. I think you should know the answer to this. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, what's my name? Huh? What's the matter? How strange. Huh, it told me no. Ah, I bet it means it doesn't know. It may be the specter of the spirit board, but it doesn't know everything. Is the spirit really the real deal? <laughs> it's fine. I feel like it's giving me attitude. Uh, what is this place? Oh, specter of the spirit board, where are we? High school. High school, that's right. The answers don't seem very precise. 
Fine. What is the name of the girl across from me? Mio, that's right. That's not fair. It knows your name, Mio. It even used that weird character you used to spell your name. How flattering. Mio Kurzuzu. Mio transferred to class 2C at Kamigata High School about two months ago. Although she is an extremely mild-mannered young woman, she exudes a somewhat off-putting dark aura, which makes it difficult for her to form friendships. Mio has, however, found a friend in her classmate, uh, Yako Sakazaki, and has begun opening up to her little by little. The truth of the matter is that Mio is the apprentice of a famous psychic. Possessing exceptional spirit sense, she takes on the troublesome task of surreptitiously handling spirit disturbances that break out in, in schools across Tokyo before they become a problem. She transfers schools frequently as a result, and thus has trouble making human friends. Mio has already solved an incident at Kamigata High School involving a female student possessed by a spirit. Although she takes effort to hide the, her spirit sense, many develop an impression that Mio has deep knowledge of the occult and the paranormal upon first meeting her, leading her to be anxious that her secrets have been exposed. The most common comment she receives is that she seems to get along well with crows and black cats. She's a witch! I bet even the teachers get it wrong all the time. I guess these paranormal beings just tend to take a liking to you. No, oh, I don't know how I should feel about that. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Are you truly the Spectre of the Spirit Board? Huh? It's a no. Is it lying? Not quite. The Spectre of the Spirit Board is just a temporary name we call them when using the board. We're actually calling a spirit with a strong uh, tie to this place, or one of the people participating. In other words, a spirit that just happened to be nearby just felt like answering. They don't really think of themselves as the Spectre of the Spirit Board. Oh. Really? Huh. Feels like some of the mystique has disappeared. Do you mind if I still call you the Spectre of the Spirit Board? Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks. Always good to remember to say please and thank you. I'll ask it again. What is my name? Didn't even hesitate this time. Hmm. All right, it's time to try asking serious questions. Yeah. Okay, here I go. I'll be serious now. Yes, please. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Did Michio, did Michio Shira, Shira Ishii in our class who died by committing suicide by jumping one week ago. Really commit suicide? No. So it really wasn't. I'm not surprised. I never believed it from the start. Now, now's the important part. Yeah. Uh, Michio is a second year student at Kamagata, Kamagata High School. She was found deceased one week ago in a back alley off of South Uwira Gasui Street, her entire body broken and severely contorted. Police determined that Michio committed suicide by jumping from a nearby apartment building. As there is no suicide note, the police based their conclusion on interviews with Michio's peers. Michio was an honor student with a good head on her shoulders and consistently excellent grades, making her a favorite among the teachers. Although she appeared somewhat reserved, she had a positive outlook and a, on life and a courageous spirit. Michio and Yako formed a long-lasting friendship during childhood, with Yako's unbending, uncompromised attitude deeply influencing Michio. However, beneath her strong exterior, Michio had been pushing herself too hard and keeping her emotions bottled up to the point that they risked overflowing. Following her father's death three years ago and, and moving to a new house, Michio began avoiding Yako. Although the two remained in the same area of town and attended the same high school, they gradually grew further apart. Yako herself worried for her childhood friend, but incapable of wading into, into the complexities of Michio's home life, kept her distance. The days passed, and though Michio longer, uh, Michio longer to confess everything to Yako, the moment to do so never came. Michio carried an old talisman and memento of her father with her at all times. Oh, Specter of the Spirit Board, did Michio uh, Shira Ishii die in an accident? It said yes. So it was an accident, not a suicide. Michio. Then did she slip and fall off the, from that apartment building? Huh? She didn't? What do you mean? Michio didn't die from falling, uh... Michio didn't die falling from the apartment building? No way. If that were true, then why was she lying on the ground like that in the back alley of the apartment building? It was an accident, but not a fall. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, what happened to Michio on that day? 
Seems like it doesn't know the details. Then how about, oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. We want to use that Rite of Resurrection to bring Michio back to life. Do you know where the Rite of Resurrection is? I wonder. Huh? <laughs> what? What is this? Stop! I'm scared! Mio! Calm down. You can't let go before it's over. Stop. Hear you. The possession. Please. It hurts. Such deep sorrow or resentful memory is slung into my mind. Fool's procession. Those who hear it. Uh, fall into the depths of hell. Kill them. Kill them. Those who hear this sound. Kill them all. You have acquired the power to, of the curse stone, the fool's procession. You can use it to kill those who hear the sound produced by the curse echo for more than 30 seconds. The effect will be negated if you are seen in that time. Mysterious tale regaling an encounter had by the daimyo at the residence in Honjo's Ushijima. Ushijima. Omayo stood atop the... Umio. Umio stood atop the tall festival tower. It was her time to shine, and she was ecstatic. It had been years since she joined the troupe, but she had yet to enjoy her day in the spotlight. She wasn't particularly pretty, nor was she all that talented. As a gossip and a loudmouth, she wasn't uh, well-liked by her peers. Some of the other girls thought of her as a teacher's pet and bullied her. I don't care about them, she thought. I'll use this chance to make something of myself. Everything was perfect. She wore a beautiful kimono and an okame mask over her face. The stage was set. The accompaniment began. She danced with everything she had. Applause rained down upon her from the crowd. Her breathing hastened with excitement. I've got to catch my breath. That's strange. I can't take my mask off. The smell of glue assaulted her nostrils. So, that's how it is. I knew it was too good to be true. Her screams were drowned out by the music as she squirmed and struggled. Omayo is giving it all, her all today. We have to keep up. The crown livened even more. No! No, please, someone help me! She fell from the tower, writhing in pain, as she begged those around her for help. The music stopped in time with Omayo's heart. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now. Kill. Can you hear it, Curse Bearer? You who so strongly desires the right. Kill them. The information they gained from the spirit board suggests that Michio's death was not a suicide. When they continue to press the spirit board for the location of the Rise of Res Resurrection, a curse echo suddenly appears. Hey, did you hear? Someone from our school committed suicide. What? Really? Who? I heard that Michio from Class C, right? No way. Michio? She'd been acting pretty strange lately, but I still can't believe it. Did you hear about Michio and Class C? Yeah, she seemed like the stereotypical horror, uh, honor student in her first year, but she stopped showing up to class and her grades started dropping off after her third semester. So she offed herself because her grades were bad? No fair. Just thinking about practice tests makes me want to die too. All anyone cares about is test scores and grades. Did you know? I heard Michio's mom remarried last year. They say her new stepdad is a total jerk. Really? How so? Like, he'd peek on her while she changes and couldn't keep his hands off her. Gross. I even heard he's an ex-con. If she resists him, he gets violent. That's so scary. No way. I couldn't take that. 
I'd probably think about killing myself too if I had to deal with someone like that at home. You hear about suicides on the news, but for it to happen here, it's a little scary. By the way, isn't there a girl who transferred into Class C recently? Oh, I heard about her. She's gloomy, doesn't stand out much. Do you know that the school she was at before she transferred also had a suicide? What? For real? That seems like kind of fishy. Ahem. There might be some of you who already know, but... A member of our class, Michio Shiraishi, passed away last night. Okay, okay, calm down. I know this comes as a surprise, but please keep quiet. Cause of death is still under investigation. There's nothing we know for certain at the moment. Detailed investigation reports will come from the police, so please don't go spreading any rumors. Got it? We're sending everyone home for the day. No dilly-dallying on your way. School will be off tomorrow as well. Hey, you, stop celebrating. Show some respect. There will be a memorial service scheduled next week by, at the school assembly, if anyone wishes to pay their respects individually. Um, Yako? Um, sorry to bug you. It's just, you seem a little different from your usual self. I hope I'm not being a nosy. Thanks, Mio. But, thanks, Mio. Was I acting that strangely? Yeah, enough to make me worry. If you want to talk, I'm happy to listen. Yeah, this is perfect timing. There's actually something I want to ask you. Yeah? Hey, Mio. You know about the Rite of Resurrection, right? Uh, yeah. It's that thing Mr. Arishi apparently discovered and wrote a, an article about. I doubt there's many people who don't know. He's always talking about it. Why is she duck facing too? Do you believe it's real? Huh? Well, um... Sounds a little too good to be true to me. But on the off chance that it really works... You could bring Michio back to life with it. I want to find if it's, uh, I want to find it if there's even the slightest chance of bringing Michio back. But how will you look for it? Right, that's the thing. Uh, you know that spirit board thing that everyone's been doing? Where you summon a spirit and ask it whatever you want? Ah, yeah, I know it. I want to try it out. There's something I want to know. Why are you telling me this? I mean, you seem like the type to know about this stuff. Oh, you do? Yeah, you look like you're really into the occult stuff. You know, you got that kind of gloomy look. Huh, I don't know how I should feel about that. But you do know how to do it, right? Well, yes. I think I probably know a little more than most. Okay, please help me. You're my only hope. Hmm. No. There we go. Michio, she... I wonder why she had to die. She didn't leave a note or anything, but they announced that it was a suicide. That can't be right. She would never kill herself. Michio was so happy and always looked on the bright side of things. She loved coming to school. I know she was going through some hard times, but for her to kill herself? I never got a chance to speak with her. She was often absent from school, and when she did come in, she looked depressed. You're right. And that's why everyone was so willing to accept that she committed suicide. They acted like they cared, but all they did was gossip about it. They put together little pieces of information and spread rumors like it's the truth. Isn't that terrible? Yes, it is. I've heard some that are really awful. In the end, the only reason they're able to say stuff like this is because they aren't personally involved. It's true that she didn't get along with her new stepdad and that her grades went down, but to say things like, how sad, no wonder she killed herself. How dare they? She always told me she was okay whenever I talked with her because I was worried. She would have told me if there was something bothering her so badly she'd kill herself over it. Uh-huh. I won't let Michio's death be written off like this. Like, maybe she got caught up in something bad. Something bad? People have been talking about that body found in the former Yasuda Gardens, right? Some are saying that this town is cursed or something. Yes, there's been a strange feeling around things recently. Uh, the thing you want to ask it, is it... Yeah, I want to know about the I want to know about the truth behind Michio's death, and where the right of resurrection is in. I see. Hmm. I don't know if getting the answer to these questions will be as easy as you hope. Please, the teachers and police aren't any help. And there's only so much I can do alone. If there's even the slightest chance, then, well, 
Okay, if that would make you feel better, then I'll help. Yes! Thank you, Mio. Okay, then tomorrow after dark. Uh, case notes regarding the suicide of Michio Sura Ishii. Body discovered one week ago, died from full body blunt force trauma in the alley off of South Weragasui Street, believed to have fallen from the roof of a nearby apartment complex. These parents had recently remarried, and rumors among the students suggest physical abuse by her stepfather may constitute mute motive for suicide. Holy shit. All right. Yako Sakazaki, 12 a.m. Kamigata High School, Class 2C. Uh, huh? Ah, are you awake, Yako? Yeah, what happened? You can't remember? Let's see, we used the spirit board, and I suddenly heard something, like this weird voice, uh, and then I passed out. Yes, as far as I can tell, you aren't experiencing any, uh, experiencing any negative effects. I think it was just a mild shock from how sudden it was. Huh? Ah, was everything okay with the spirit? Yep, it was almost bad, but I got it to leave. More importantly, what is that thing you have in your hand? Hmm? In my hand? Whoa, what the heck is this? It looks so freaky. When did I get this? Oh, there's so much anger and hatred held within it. It looks, a, like a, a, looks like a little like tools that were used for ancient curses. What? That's so scary. Yako, you just said you heard a strange voice, right? Could you tell me what you heard? Anything you can recall? I think it might be connected to that object. Uh, let's see. It felt like I was at the bottom of a dark place. Then this voice felt like it was echoing in my mind. After that, it just kept shouting, kill them. I see. Thank you. Yako? I think you may have exactly what you need in order to use the Rite of Resurrection. A curse with the power to take people's lives and turn them into soul dregs. What? You mean this is a real curse? I know I said I wanted to use the Rite of Resurrection to bring back Michio, but... But why? Why me? It makes no sense. Yako, please calm down and listen. Yeah, I'm sorry about panicking. No, it's okay. Fear is something we feel in the face of the unknown. Long ago, people would give names to phenomena they couldn't understand in order to live with them. However, modern day developments in science and culture have pushed for the rejection of things that can't be measured, and so the paranormal has been treated like it doesn't exist. But they've been around since a long, long time ago. If you just understand, you can see that there's nothing to be afraid of. First, calming down is the most important. Accept reality for what it is. Huh. I only really gave this stuff a shot because it was uh, popular, but... You really do have a connection with this stuff, don't you? Well, I suppose to some extent. Hey, Mio, what do I do? Where do I start? Am I cursed? Am I gonna die? It's okay. I'll take care of the curse. That's why I'm here in the first place. What? Trust me. I'll take care of things. It'll be alright. Thanks. I was the one who dragged you along to do the spirit board. It's fine. You're desperate to find a way to try and help your friend. But spirit boards are dangerous. You have to take them seriously. So I'm glad you invited me. Alright, let's review everything we've learned so far and think of how to move forward. Okay. What is this curse? Am I cursed? Well... I've only looked into it a little, but I wouldn't quite say you're cursed. It's more like you've gained the ability to use the power of a curse. So there shouldn't be any kind of negative paranormal effect on you. The power to use a curse? Do you mean this cursed stone? Yes. If the cursed stone is used under certain conditions, a curse will be placed on someone, taking their life and turning it into soul dregs. Soul dregs are said to be required to connect the rite of resurrection. Normally, a curse is a spell that would only be usable by an Myoji of considerable talent. I believe that curse stone makes it so that even normal people can use them. So someone like me with no knowledge could curse someone. Yes, but it's still nothing to take lightly. You could end up having it redirected right at you. To tell you the truth, something unusual did happen while we were using the spirit board. It happened right around midnight, I think. This whole area seems to be under the effect of the Feast of Shadows. Feast of Shadows? Yes, it's a type of spell that temporarily boosts the potency of the supernatural. It also has the effect of making the powers of certain curses uh, echo. Uh, it also has the effect of making the powers of certain curse echoes manifest more easily. Jud judging by its strength, I'd say it probably covers about a three to four kilometer radius. 
Three to four kilometers? That's big enough to cover all of Sumida City. Yes, I think the Feast of the Shadows was used to cause the resentment lingering in the area to manifest as curse shadows. Someone did this. But who? I don't know enough to say. But it's likely that it was done by someone who wants to uncover the Rite of Resurrection. This isn't something to happen naturally. I see. Technique that allows one to create a field that temporarily boosts spiritual energy. In addition to amplifying the spiritual power of a particular area, it can also be used to amplify the strength of grudges and desires tied to the area. The effectiveness of the Feast of Shadows is dependent on the abilities of the user, but it's possible to limit uh, the scope and range of the spell to such a degree that one could use it to amplify the power of even those not naturally gifted with spirit sons. A cursed stone's powers can only be used in this area under the influence of the Feast of Shadows. The effects only appear after the sun has set. By setting a limit on when they can be used, the curses are strengthened. So the curses can't be used outside of this area or during the day. Correct, but speaking of limits, to actually use a curse to kill someone, it seems there are conditions that need to be met. Conditions? You mean like how many curse echoes need someone, uh... You mean how, like how my curse echo needs someone to listen to the sound it makes for 30 seconds? To be honest, I don't really understand it. Like, how do I even summon the curse echo or make the sound? Do I just, like, will it? Do you mind if I try? Stop, stop, stop. You shouldn't be using curses all willy-nilly. Even if there are conditions that have to be met, the power to kill someone without leaving behind evidence is dangerous enough. In that sense, maybe you really have been cursed. I'm sorry that you got wrapped up in this situation, even though I'm here with you. That curse stone, I think whoever holds it becomes a curse bearer. It would probably be best for me to hold on to it, but then I'd feel bad about forcing it on you. No, I sense a powerful force rejecting me. I don't think I would be able to take it. Really? Why? If we tried separating it from you, the curse may trigger. That's how bad I sense it wants to stay with you. No way. That curse stone might look like nothing more than an old Natsuki carving, but I can sense a powerful, resentful energy from it. I don't think it's a good idea for me to even touch it. I may seem like I know what I'm doing, but I don't know how to handle something this powerful. Really? This little thing? If you threw it away and someone with bad ideas picked it up, it could be bad. I think it would be safer to avoid the risk of getting anyone else involved and have you hold on to it for now. Well, now I'm kind of freaked out. Anyways, we need to make it to daybreak. I think the curse should weaken once it's morning. I'll help you find a way to deal with it then. Okay. So, there are two things that you should remember. First, do not fulfill the conditions while it's night. Second, should you happen to fulfill the, the conditions, don't use the curse. Right. The mysterious voice said the curse stone is called the Fool's Procession, right? Yeah, that's from the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, right? Our school is said to be connected with a story of the same name, one of the mysteries. Right, I don't think it's a coincidence. This is just a guess, but... It's possible that you were chosen because it could feel, uh, could feel your desire for the Rite of Resurrection. If this is a curse of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, then it's possible that there are others who received curses associated with the other mysteries. Yeah, that voice also said there are other curse bearers, or whatever you called them. Not only that, apparently you can get a lot of soul dregs by killing a curse bearer. Right. That's certainly not good. Even if we have no intention of killing others with the curse... There's a chance you may be targeted if other curse bearers find us. Eep. We'll have to avoid anyone who has another of the curses. That means we should avoid people at night as much as possible. And then she climbed over the fence and right into a, a curse bearer's arms. Uh, but Mio, yes? If this curse is real, that means I could bring back Michio if I used it, right? The Rite of Resurrection would be real too. Yes, that's true. But you can't do that, Yako. But... Feels like it's not the time to worry about that kind of stuff. If Michio died in an accident, then I'm sure she didn't want to die. What's the issue with putting a little curse on a complete stranger? I sort of feel like it wouldn't be a big deal. What's going on with you? You're not acting like yourself, Yako. You would never even consider taking the life of another person. Is it the curse's influence on you? Maybe the curse echoes grudge is rubbing off on you. Will you show me it for a second? Hmm? Is there something inside it? No, stop. Yako. Oh, I'm sorry. But it's like, I just suddenly really didn't want you to touch it. 
I understand. I'm sorry. But you need to give up on the right of resurrection. What? Because that's the real curse. Using re resurrection as lure tempts the curse bearers into using the curses. You have to resist it. Don't let yourself be, be deceived by some curse. But Michio could... I think for tonight we should get you home to rest. I'll walk you. The curse's influence should subside in the morning. Okay. I'm sorry, but I'm telling you that you need to give up on the right. It's beyond us. Even a single curse stone alone is too much to handle. Bringing back the dead isn't something so simple. I know how much it hurts, but please focus on just worrying about surviving tonight. Even now, we're in great danger. Okay, let's get going then, shall we? We'll take the same route we took to get in here. All right. We'll be fine, right? There's no one else at school, is there? I think so. The night shift janitor should, shouldn't be patrolling this late at night either. Ah. Huh? What? Why'd lights go out? Mio, are you okay? Hello, Mio? She's not there. What's happening? Where, where are you? <laughs> Teacher boy. Uh, that's not good. Ah, huh? Oh no, oh no, oh no. What was that? Get me out of here. Mio, 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 where are you? Yako, I'm here. Over here, can you see me? Huh? Where? I can't see anything. Not that way, Yako. Behind you, I'm behind you. Turn around, this way. It's pitch black. I have no idea which way I'm facing. There you are, Mio. This way, over here. Be careful, your field of vision is being limited. Right. After Yako acquires the curse of the fool's possession, Mio tries to persuade her to give up on going after the right of resurrection. The effects of other curse echoes are already appearing at the school, so the two are hurry to get out of the classroom. Inside Kamigata High School. Hey Mio, what was that just now? Could it be another curse echo different from mine? I think so, yes. We may have been discovered by another curse bearer. Oh. Hmm? What's wrong? Shh. Someone's there. In that classroom. What? Something moved inside. Well? We don't need to check it out, right? Let's hurry and get out of here. Maybe. Person who used that curse echo may be in there. If we could just see who it is, it could help us later. Right, okay, just a glimpse. Be careful. It's the teacher. Well, can you see anything? Try and get a look around. Ah! Huh. Is that our homeroom teacher, Mr. Jono, Jono Uchi? And the person with him is Hitomi from Class A. What? Oh my, what is going on here? Ah! That bastard. He's at it again. I have to kill him. I won't let him get away with this. What? Curse. Could kill him with it. No, Yako, you can't use the curse stone. It's got it into you. Resist it. Who's there? Is someone there? This is bad. We have to go before they see us. 
Kohei Juno Uchi. Jono Uchi. Kohei is an English teacher and the homeroom teacher for class 2C at Kamagata High School. He was seen alone with Hitomi uh, Okuda in a classroom late at night by Yako and Mio. Kohei was an honor student in the top of his class back in his high school days, the apple of his parents' eyes. He was placed under immense pressure to attend the first-rate uh, university. Family's plans came to naught, however, when the pressure caused Kohei to sink into a deep depression and fail his entrance exam. Even at the university he was able to enter, Kohei struggled to keep up with his classes, leaving him a vain but wounded young man. Kohei never aspired to be a teacher, but figured it was the least he could do with his talents. He considers his students to be beneath him, and largely looks down on them all. It also sounds like he might be a nonce, uh, given the reaction. Uh, Hitomi is a rebellious student in class 2A at Kamagata High School. On the rare occasion when she does show up to school, she skips all her classes and spends her time hanging out on the rooftop with her fellow troublemakers. Hitomi is regarded by the teachers as one of the worst offenders amongst the delinquent students attending Kamagata High School. Hitomi was a fairly ordinary student when she started high school. However, trouble at home in her first year had her take a turn for the worst. She began associating with a group of delinquents uh, from other schools. Uh, with whom she'd wander around town at night to avoid returning home. Warnings from teachers about dress code and conduct violations have fallen on deaf ears, with Hitomi going on reactionary rampages around high school, around school with her friends, breaking windows and disrupting classes. Uh, that should be reactive, I believe. Recently, some teachers have taken to using harsher measures and even corporal punishment to correct Hitomi's behavior, but this has only served to exacerbate the animosity between uh, Hitomi and the school. Hitomi is widely regarded as leader of the troublemakers at Kamangata High School, but the title does not mean much to her. Huh. 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 Seems like they're not coming after us. Let's hope they didn't see our faces. But Yako, what came over you all of a sudden? Huh. Sorry. Thanks for stopping me. It's like this uncontrollable rage suddenly welled up inside me. I wonder what's going on. Uh, I wonder what's gotten into me. I can barely even remember what happened. I'm rarely. I'm really sorry. I do think it's partly the curse's influence on you, but we certainly saw something shocking. My heart's still pounding. I'm a little surprised you know who told me from Class A. She tends to stand out a lot. Gotcha. Well, she certainly does dress like a delinquent, though she barely shows up to school. But could Mr. Jono Uchi or Hitomi really be a curse bearer? I don't know, but we should be careful just in case. Uh, you should probably leave. Yako. Hmm? When I give the signal, run. Go straight for the entrance. Don't look back, no matter what. Huh? Why? Did something happen? Something happened, didn't it? What about you, Mio? I'll be fine. We'll meet up outside the school yards. If I'm not there in ten minutes, go straight home, okay? Okay, go. Right. Don't look back. Don't look back. I have to get outside. Let's see. To get to the gates, I go by the gym and... Huh? What are you doing, miss? Eek! You shouldn't be here this late. Don't you know what time it is? Oh, Mr. Ashmaya. Well, if, isn't, if it isn't little Yako. Anyway, students ain't supposed to be outside playing around at night. School janitor, Makoto Ashmaya. Koto was the janitor at the Kamagata High School. His predecessor was nearing retirement, so he began working as his replacement about six months ago. Uh, Makoto is popular amongst the students for his friendly and caring nature, going as far as to remember the names and faces of all those attending the school. He is affectionately known as an old man Ashimaya. Although he appears to be a simple, amiable man, Makoto's occasional shrewd remarks have led to speculation among students that he may have led a far more interesting life than it seems. Whatever the truth may be, he will be remembered as one of the seven mysteries of Kamigata High School for some time to come. I know you're rough around the edges, but I, I didn't take you for one to act out like this. I'm sorry. I forgot something back in the classroom. Huh. No sass today, huh? Realized you were in the wrong, did you? Yeah? Forgot something in your, in your classroom, huh? You're a piece of work. Hmm. But you didn't have nothing with you. Oh. Wait, you do. What's that in your hand? 
Huh? Well, um, this is what I forgot. I uh, got it from my grandpa. It's really important to me. Hmm. Girls these days sure have weird tastes. Well, okay. Better head straight home if you're done. I won't tell on you. No, wait. I can't let you walk home alone uh, this late. All right, wait just a little. Or hurry and lock things up. Ah, but... I'm worried about Mia. Um, actually, a friend of mine is still inside. I think they'll be here soon. That's so. Who's your friend? Uh, my classmate, Mio Kurosuzu. Ah, the transfer student. Breaking school rules already, huh? Didn't take her for the type. No, I was the one who dragged her here. Well, whatever. I'll go take a look. It'll be safer if you go home together. If you go home together. Oh, right. She's in the first floor hallways. Be careful, though. You don't know what may be in there. What is that supposed to mean? First floor, yeah. I'll be right back. Yako Sakazaki. 2 a.m. And this is where she dies. I do really love this uh, parallax layer thing that, that they've got going on. She's late. I've been waiting for 20 or 30 minutes, but there's no sign of her. I'm starting to get worried. I'm going to take a look. Uh, I believe she's probably dead. Mio, are you there? Huh. Eek! Oh, Mio, what happened? Where did I go wrong this time? It's my fault. It's all my fault. I left her alone with the curse bearer. Mio. I'm sorry, I... The truth is... Ah! Yako Sakazaki, deceased. One-sided Yako. My, my, Ando, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable results, but this was bound to happen. There is someone who must not be trusted. Once you have an idea of who it is, be sure to come back. I'm sure you'll see what you need to do differently. It is a difficult judgment for Yako Sakazaki to make, you see. This chapter will remain incomplete for now. I rec recommend you try another route. Now then, until next time. Um, I guess we go this route, not dreams. Uh, when the son of Harue, Sh Har Harue Shigai... When the son of Harue Shigima was kidnapped, a botched investigation by the police resulted in a child's murder. One year later, Harue has hired a private investigator to help resolve the unsettled case. Late at night, while speaking to the detective at her home, something strange suddenly appears. May those who mock fire's flame perish in flame. Kill them. Kill them. The flame bearers. Kill them all. You have acquired the power of the cursed stone, the haunting clappers. You can use it to kill those with fire or a fire starting device on their person. Press the use curse button to set your target lights. Files updated. Uh, curse power kills by burning one who is in possession of fire or fire, fire starting uh, device. Red, red, red. Everything is dyed crimson. My home is burning to the ground. It's hot. So, so hot. I must call for help, but I cannot speak. My throat must be burned up from the smoke. No, I think I'm already on fire. That's right. I'll just use the clappers. Clack, clack. Is anybody there? Clack, clack. Why is no one coming? I'm going to burn to death. How did it come to this? All right. Her. Must be the work of that vixen who appeared suddenly and enchanted my lord. That witch. Those hauntingly cold eyes had my lord dancing in the palm of her hand. Perhaps I was also taken in by her. How many innocent people did I lure in under, lure in under orders? This must be karma. The sound of a heavy bell. It feels like my head will split open. 
Uh, that's my, uh, May needs to be my. Uh, it feels like my head will split open. All ah, right, the evening bell. That must be why nobody can hear the sound of my clappers. I've got to do it louder. Clack, clack. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now. Kill. Can you hear it, curse bearer? You who so strongly desires the right. Kill them. Kill for mother. Harue Shigima. 12 a.m. Shigima Mansion Reception Room. Back with me, ma'am? Can't say I understand what just happened. But it certainly seems to have put you in a good mood. This might be the first time I've ever seen you really smile. Sweet dreams. Harue is a housewife who resides in the manor near Shumoku Bridge. Her 11-year-old son, Shuichi, was kidnapped and murdered about a year ago. The death was the result of a mistake on the part of the detective assigned to the case, a mistake which enraged the kidnapper and had him cut off all contact with the police, leaving no room for negotiation. The incident was covered up and Shuichi's killer remains at large, leading the aggrieved Harue to call on the services of a private investigator, Richter Kai, to uncover the truth. The Shigimi, uh, Shigima family came from a line of samurai who built their residence on Hanjo during the Edo period. They assumed important positions in the police force following the Meiji re Revolution, thereby protecting their family's elevated status. Even today, many in the Shigima line work as police uh, bureaucrats and senior police officers. Harue's father sits in the upper echelons of the National Police Agency, and her husband, adopted into the Shigima clan through an arranged marriage, is also a highly respected agency official. However, as her family prioritizes work above all else, it wasn't long before Harue's marriage grew cold. Though she wants for nothing she is isolated from her neighbors and withdrawn from society. Seeing her son grow into a young man gave Harue a purpose in life, but it was cut short by the falling incident, by the kidnapping incident. Following the incident, Harue spent many days in a deep depression, breaking into sudden fits of shouting and wandering around in the middle of the night. Her cheerful, loving disposition faded away, and she took to making snide remarks at her husband, which only further soured their relationship. A few months ago, Harue's husband was transferred to another area for work, and now rarely returns home, with Harue left to live in the large, empty mansion alone. As a housekeeper who has been with the family for a long time comes... Uh, as a housekeeper who has been with the family for a long time comes in to take care of all the housework, Harway has nothing but time on her hands. No. Not dreams. Sounds like something I might want to hear about. A fax machine. It can send images to another place along the telephone network. I don't really know how it works. Most houses don't have one. I rarely find a use for it. A telephone. This mansion has a private line. A caller television. Father bought one as soon as it hit the market. He likes to have the latest gadgets. Unlike the late. Excuse me. Unlike the latest models, there is no remote control. We've had it for a long time. Back when it was new, we all gathered around it and marveled at, at it as a family. But with father and my husband being away so often, it quickly fell into disuse. An old hanging scroll. I don't know who painted it. It's been hanging here since before I was born. An arrangement of flowers. We bring in someone to do it. I don't even know what the flowers are called. A stereo unit with separated speakers designed for home use. My husband insisted on buying one, even though he isn't one to listen to music often. Well, I'll be damned. Is that what I think it is? Goodness, you made me jump. It's just a silly little sticker my son got from somewhere or other. He put it up just before... Well, you know what happened. I still can't bring myself to take it down. Let me take a closer look. I knew it. It's head honcho from way back in set one. This is a real collector's item. Excuse me? Don't tell me you've never heard of the Mockingbirds. The what? They're the hottest new craze. Cute little birds dressed up like rough and tumble delinquents. I've never heard of them, but this certainly seems to matter to you. 
The best part is nobody knows who made them. They just started showing up around town. And soon enough, they'd won everybody's hearts. Story goes that they're made by some anonymous artist who covertly leaves them behind in specific locations. No one knows when or where they'll show up next. They're basically an urban legend of sorts. To think one would turn up here of all places. This is a good sign. I'm sure of it. Oh, well that's nice. Mockingbird number one discovered. Collect your first Mockingbird sticker. These popular bird mascots uh, stickers seem to pop up everywhere. Nobody knows who the legendary artist is behind these quirky birds, but they quickly became popular for their surreal yet oddly cute designs. Be in the right place at the right time in Hanjo, and you might just be able to find all 20 of them scattered around. Legend has it, collecting them all will bring good luck. Let me bring you up to speed. We were in the middle of a chat when you suddenly started spacing out, and the whole time you were grinning to yourself like you just won the lottery. Care to tell me what that was all about? Well, where to start? Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. So, the haunting clapper's curse echo appeared out of nowhere, told you how to perform the rite of resurrection, and gave you the curse you'll need to do it. Have I got that right? That's right. So it's all real. Honestly, I still find it hard to believe. But I guess I have to now. I saw that curse stone appear in your hand myself. It looked like it popped clean out of thin air. With evidence that clear, there's no denying that there's some supernatural force at work. Private investigator I hired. Friend told me about him. They said he's not very well known, but he's good at what he does. When I first visited his office in Nota City and saw how he dressed, I could hardly believe he was a detective. But after talking to him for a while, I changed my mind. He says some strange things at times, but he seems like a re the reliable sort. Uh, after taking on a request from Haruo Shigimi, um, Haruo Shigima, to investigate the unsolved kidnapping and murder of her son, he gets caught up in the events surrounding the Rite of Resurrection. Once a police officer, Richter was racked with guilt over the police's inability to help all those in need, and quit the force to start his own private investigation firm. However, his soft-hearted nature leads him to take on too many cases, and he has put his office in dire financial straits. How he is still in business is a mystery, with some whispering that a wealthy patron is keeping him afloat. Richter studied alongside Detective Don Ario in the police academy. Somewhat surprisingly, given his outlandish clothing and mannerisms, Richter ex excels at covert investigations, entailing his targets. He proudly refers to himself as an investigator extraordinaire, though that only ever uh, succeeds at impressing himself. Richter's biggest source of happiness is nuzzling his female albino parakeet, Ernestine, uh, which he keeps in his office. He also enjoys collecting mockingbird stickers, a popular line of merchandise featuring birds inexplicably dressed like the delinquents, can be frequently sighted searching around town for them. While out and about, Richter typically leaves the office and more importantly, Ernestine, uh, in the care of Amamori, a junior high schooler who volunteered to assist Richter after being involved in a previous case. Uh, Richter Kai's private investigation firm, Azure Heron Agency, in Kamada Oda City. Originally, Kai thought it to give it a simple name like Kai's Detective Agency, but upon hearing that people are more likely to pick names listed at the front of the phone book, uh, alphabetically, he decided to pick a name starting with an A. Thus, the Azure Heron Agency was established. However, it is questionable whether the heron, a bird of somewhat ominous significance, is an effective symbol for attracting customers. Even his own assistant has referred to the name as confusing at best. After all, rather than an Azure Heron, Richter keeps a white parrot as a pet and dresses not in blue, but mostly in white. If there was a sim uh, symbolic connection to be made here, it has surely been lost on all but Richter himself. Private investigator, also known as Private Eye, is a detective who operates their own agency. While there are no formal qualifications necessary to become a private investigator, many are retired police agents or detectives due to the similarities between the work involved. At a glance, private investigation firms and inquiry offices might look similar, but they carry out different types of investigations. Inquiry offices specialize in conducting credit checks on businesses, while private investigators are generally involved in telling persons of interest in gaining information surreptitiously. <laughs> I don't think you quite understand. Oh? This isn't about evidence, and it isn't about belief. It's more than that. I know it's real. The moment the curse appeared, I knew everything before it even said a word. 
It was already there in my head as clear as day. You just knew, huh? It was etched into my soul, along with the curse echo's resentful memories. So I can feel it, what it was like. Dying like they did hundreds of years ago. Wreathed in flame, writhing in pain as my flesh blackens and my blood boils. I can feel it. All the agony, all the rage. It fills me with bloodlust. I think I need to kill someone. Anyone will do, just as long as they're carrying fire. I see. That could be a problem. You think so? From what I know of you... I was sure you'd see it as an opportunity. The stronger the desire to resurrect someone, the stronger the urge to kill. That's how it seems to me, anyway. Good grief. Talk about a spanner in the works. I say we take stock for a moment, remind ourselves where, we're, where we've come from and where we're going. That might be a good idea. That's what you hired me for, ma'am. To look into your son's kidnapping last year. To uncover the truth behind the abduction and murder of Shuichi Shigima. Oh yes, I remember. They never did find the one who did it. That's what I'm here about today, in fact. Kind of you to let me drop by so late, by the way. I've been turning uh, I've been turning over every last stone, and I've come up with the grand total of one lead. So you said. As far as the police are concerned, it's a cold case, but I've managed to make some headway. I remember, you were just about to tell me. The Shigima Kidnapping, a kidnapping and murder case that took place in Honjo, uh, Sumida, around one year ago. Haruya Shigima's son, Shuichi, age 11, was kidnapped on his way home from high school, uh, with ransom being demanded that same evening. Initially, the kidnapping was thought of as a simple extortion scheme, but when it came to light that the Shigima family was closely tied to the police, and Shuichi was in fact the grandson of a senior official, it was quickly assumed that the perpetrator was acting upon a grudge against the police force. The kidnapping was treated as a direct attack against the good name of the police, and a large-scale investigation was launched that used the best equipment available to trace the phone call. This made it all the more embarrassing when they were unable to catch the culprit, losing the public's confidence. The culprit grew cocky, rel relentlessly mocking the police force. After three days of failure after failure, Harue reached a breaking point. Spurred by concern for her son, she resolved to hand over the ransom money as fast as possible, but her husband and father, who held the prestige of the police in high regard, in high regard refused, saying that they would not let the criminal win by giving in to their demands. The increasingly frantic detective assigned to the case lost his temper when the criminal called to give an ultimatum, causing the culprit to never make contact again. Another week passed and Shuichi's body was found floating in the Sumida River. Shuichi's death could be largely ascribed to the police's incompetence, but this was ultimately covered up with stringent media embargoes. The investigation was never closed, but the case has long gone cold. Shuichi Shigima, the only son of Haruhi Shigima. He was kidnapped and murdered one year ago. His body was discovered floating in the Sumida River. Shuichi was a con conscientious, brave young boy who was determined to protect his mother, Haruhi, amid his father's frequent absences. He dreamed of becoming a police officer and displayed the diligence of an impressive sense of responsibility from a young age, likely due to being raised in the extremely strict environment. Born in the early 70s, he spent his days immersed in various activities and studies, including play playing piano, learning the abacus, taking English lessons, and training in kendo. Shuichi his tendency to put over uh, to put other people's needs over his own meant he died without ever telling his classmates how much he longed for them all to go out on a hunt for mockingbird stickers. My heart's still racing. This is it, my chance at long last. You know, we still need to figure out exactly what you want me to do. Tell you what, why don't I tell you what I've found, and then we can make a decision. Alright. I suppose there's not much point in going over the kidnapping itself. No, I'm very familiar. Then I'll leave that for the files to cover and just confirm a few things about the case. The police trace the culprit's calls back to, let's see here, Northern Oyoko River, here in Sumida City. It's quite a wide area. That's right. In the end, they never managed to nail down exactly where the calls were coming from. But it was almost certainly the same location that Shuichi was being held captive, since Shuichi's voice could be heard during the killer's calls. Did they hold Shuichi captive at the park where the where the telephone booth was? Is that why the story starts there? 
Northern Oyoko River is quite a distance from Shuichi's normal school commute. Factoring in that he was seen at school but went missing before he arrived at his house, it's likely that he was abducted by car on his route home. Maybe, but... Exactly. Shuichi was a clever boy. He never would have gotten into a car with a stranger. That's right. I was very firm about that. I know he understood too. I even saw him warning the other children. It's possible that they forced him into the car. The only issue th there is there weren't any witnesses to the kidnapping. You can't bundle someone into a car with that many students around and not be noticed. But nobody came forward to say they saw anything suspicious. So did they target him at some other time or somewhere away from his usual route? Both of those seem a little far-fetched. Which raises the question, how did the kidnapper pull it off? The police never managed to find an answer. In the end, they decided that the kidnapper must have just gotten lucky. Why not turn the problem on its head? Was it the dad? The kidnapper managed to convince Shuichi to get into their car, but how? The only thing that makes sense to me is that they were somebody he would have had a reason to trust. A teacher, perhaps, or a relative, or somebody else that he knew. But all the adults Shuichi knew had alibis. The police checked them all thoroughly. They did, huh? No one throws numbers at a problem like a cop. But what if it wasn't someone he knew, or rather... What if the culprit disguised himself... Uh, disguise themselves as a police officer. That would explain why he didn't find them suspicious. The Shinigima, uh, the Shigima family has close ties with the police, after all. He would have had a reason to trust them. You might be right. But surely, that couldn't have. Well, there's a problem with the theory. You'd be surprised how much a police officer stands out. That's sort of the point, after all. They're meant to be visible to turn against crime. But here's another interesting little bit of trivia I happen to know. When you ask people to imagine someone suspicious, nobody pictures women or children. Even kids who have been warned about stranger danger often subconsciously expect that danger to look like an adult man. Besides, Shuichi was the sort of boy who wanted to be a police officer when he grew up. He must have had a very strong sense of right and wrong. That's right. Wait, surely you can't mean. Now you're getting it. If, say, a young woman approached Shuichi asking for help, what would he have done? Someone like that said they were lost and asked him for directions. Would he have gotten into a car? He might have. My husband always told him that a man had a duty to watch out for women and children. You could certainly argue that kind of attitude is outdated, outdated nowadays, but if Shuichi believed it, then we might have something here. Then you think the culprit was a young woman. But it was a man's voice on the phone. She might have been an accomplice, or maybe she didn't even realize she was being used. If anything, that would explain why she hasn't come forward. She herself might not realize she had anything to do with the case. So the question is, did anybody see Suichi speaking with a young woman on the day of his disappearance? See what I said about people's biases. Uh, that goes for witnesses, too. And I figured that maybe, if I started asking new questions, I might get some new answers. So I spent my day asking around Shuichi's school routes, seeing if anyone had seen something. And one man thought he had... Do you mean he saw it happen? Well, I can't say that for sure yet. Turned out he wanted something from me, so he asked if we could talk in private. Several hours earlier... All right, this should do. There's one. Or, there's no one around. We can speak in confidence. Uh, excuse me. What was your name again? Jono Uchi. Got it. Well, Jono Uchi. I'm all ears. Just so we're on the same page, you're a private detective investigating Shuichi Shigima's kidnapping. Do I have that right? Of course. What else do I look like? How should I know what a private detective looks like? Oh, forget it. Look, I'll tell you straight. My life is in danger. I need your help. You'll excuse me if that caught me a little off guard. Let me ask you straight. Who is trying to kill you? A student called Michu uh, Michio Shiraishi. Interesting. A schoolgirl, eh? Sounds like you've been naughty. It's nothing like that. That girl, she's a murderer. I'm the only one who knows, but I saw what she did. Michi, uh, Michio Shiraishi. I saw her kidnap Shuichi Shigima. Come again? 
I saw her talk to him on the street and lead him away. I didn't think much of it at the time, but then he went missing. She murdered him, I'm sure of it. Or at least she's got something to do with it. That's what you're here for, isn't it? Then you can't let her get to me. If that's true, you've been sitting on some valuable information. Why didn't you tell anybody? Well, you see, if you can't explain that, I don't have any reason to believe you. I couldn't. She told me she'd kill me if I spoke a word. You're telling me a schoolgirl had you scared for your life. So you've been sitting on all this, uh, you've been sitting on that all this time. And you think she's coming for you now that you spilled the beans. Yes, that's it. Exactly. I'm begging you. Don't let her get me. Arrest her. I'm telling you. She's a demon. Well, you seem to blame what you're, believe what you're saying. But it just doesn't add up. How could a schoolgirl have a fully grown man so terrified? You don't know what she can do. She'll... She'll curse me. Curse you? I'm sorry, but you're losing me here. It's true. Her house. It's... Ah, forget it. Why do I even bother? You seem dubious, dubious enough to believe me, but I should have known you'd never understand. Enough. I'll find someone else to help me. Hey! Hmm. And that's about the long and short of it. I, I can hardly believe it. At the time, I thought his mention of curses was just crazy talk. But I'm starting to see that there might have been more to it. Then, if we can just find that girl, curse or no curse, if she was with Sh uh, Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping, then there's a good chance she knows something. On top of that, I did some digging on the man I spoke to. His full name is Kohei Juno, uh, Jono Uchi. He's a teacher at Kamigata High School here in Sumira. A teacher? Then the schoolgirl is one of his students. I think that's very likely. At last, we've got a lead. Hopefully, it'll be the breakthrough we're looking for. You know, we still need to figure out exactly what you want me to do. Tell you what, why don't I tell you what I found, and then we can make a decision. The Rite of Resurrection, huh? I read about that in a cult magazine the other day. Apparently, some old book showed up recently with all the gory details. And they say that the Rite can be found somewhere in Honjo. I remember the first time you told me about that. I remember the first time you told me about that. It felt like... like my prayers had been heard. Like I had hope. Real hope for the first time. Ever since that awful day, I've wondered... What if I hadn't sent him to school? What if I'd just paid the ransom? Not a day goes by that I don't think if I'd had done something differently, Shuichi would still be alive. Can't blame yourself, ma'am. It was the culprit's fault, not yours. Though I know that won't help any. Grief is funny like that. I'm guessing that's why you're after the right. Guess I didn't need to ask. It's written all over your face. I can tell how much how I can tell how much she meant to you. But and this is a big but. If this right is the real deal, using it will mean killing someone and stealing their soul. Is that a problem? If it comes to that, I'm afraid I'll have to stop you. No, oh, that's a shame. A shame, huh? That's all? I thought, if I'm going to be competing with other curse bearers, then your detective skills might come in useful. You realize you're talking about ending someone's life, right? Don't you see an issue with that? I think any parent in my position would happily kill for a chance like this. That's so, is it? Dear, oh dear. What have I gotten myself into? If it makes you uncomfortable, then you won't have to give, get any blood on your hands yourself. I don't need you to kill the other curse bearers. I only need you to find them. I won't be party to murder, ma'am. Not even for a client. How much can I give you to change your mind? Sorry, ma'am, but not everyone has a price. I've got my policies and I stick to them. I see. I didn't realize you were so stubborn. Let me say, though, it's not like I don't get what you're, you're going through. As long as you're not killing anyone with your own hands, maybe I can help you out. What do you have in mind? Well, how about stealing someone else's curse stone after they've filled it with the soul dregs? If that was all you were after, then I could lend you my services guilt-free. If the other curse bearers want to kill each other, that's their business. I'm not trying to be a hero here. I guess there's no guarantee stolen curse stone will work, but we can worry about that later. Well, then, I suppose we have a deal. 
Although, what if I stole a curse stone using my curse? Would you disapprove? That would void our contract, ma'am. Just warning you now. My. Before we go any further, why don't you tell me about the curse of yours? The haunting clappers, was it? That's one of the seven mysteries of Hanjo, if I remember correctly. That's right. My story, the original story did happen somewhere near here, I think. I'm sure I remember hearing that. In that case, my money would be on all the curse bearers being somewhere in Hanjo. Our first move should be to narrow them down. Some of them are bound to try and come for you first. We'll need to be ready. The curses make their bearers more willing to kill, so an attack could come from anywhere. That sounds sensible. And if I remember correctly, your haunting clappers can set people on fire, but only if they, if they have a naked flame or a lighter on their person, is that right? That's right. In olden times, wooden clappers were used to warn people of fire. I'm guessing it punishes those who don't heed the warning. It seems like a good curse to have. It's simple and straightforward enough to use. Although it's hard to say how it stacks up without knowing what else is on the table. You really, you really think it's that good? The target can't do much to throw it off, and it has a nice long activation window. It's big, uh, it's big that it works on lighters, too. Just slip one into your target's pocket. And say that condition were already fulfilled before they even knew you are there. They wouldn't even know what hit them. Maybe. I won't have to actually use it. I could just tell someone I could, and they'd have to do what I said. Threats could work, although without any proof, it'll come down to how convincing you can be. If only you could use the curse, then back out at the last second. At the last second? What an interesting idea. I have a lighter right here. We could try it now. That's an interesting proposition. But maybe not. I'm not quite crazy enough to make myself a guinea pig. I see. You're an odd one, ma'am, if you don't mind me saying. And I don't think it's just the curse. You flatter. As for what we do next, first of all, I think you should stay indoors. Try not to do anything spontaneous or outside of your normal routine. Right then, have you decided what you want me to working on? Um. Finally, finally I have a lead. I need to know what happened to my son. Your wish is my command, ma'am. I'll focus all my effort on looking into the kidnapping. Although, something just occurred to me. You can't investigate the matter at night, can you? At least until the sun rises. Could you search for the other curse bearers? Heh. <laughs> all right. I see how it is. Well, I'd be happy to help. Odds are good that the other curse bearers are also working by night. Anyone they kill under the cover of darkness won't be discovered until sunrise. I bet they'll be trying to do as much as they can before morning comes. So it's settled then. I'll look into the other curse bearers by night. And once the city wakes up and I can start asking questions, I'll investigate the kidnapping as well. I'll even try and find Miss uh, Shira Ishii as part of the bargain. Thank you. That's more than enough. Now then. I should get to work. There's only so much time before sunrise. I'll call you if you find I'll call you if I find out anything new. You stay here and keep a lookout. Alright. There's no telling what kind of curses you might find out on the streets tonight. Don't go outside if you can help it, and try to be ready for anything. I will. Well, if that's all, I should be going. Alright. Uh, I know that that's an awkward place to stop, but I'm going to cut the recording there. Uh, when we come back, we'll be going through a nice thought. It looks like that's the only one that we currently have. Um, and then we will go from there. Uh, thank you for joining me for another night of Strange and Scary Games. Uh, I love you. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Good night. Good night.